Hello and welcome to the first in a series of introductory Houdini tutorials where I'll be talking about the interface and navigation. So when you first open up Houdini, we're presented with this default layout, which is actually called a desktop in Houdini. And the various desktops can be accessed over here in this drop-down menu. So the default is build. And here we're presented with three different panes. This one is called the scene view. And this is basically Houdini's viewport. And here we have parameters and network, which I'll get into in a second. So to navigate in Houdini is basically the same as any other 3D app. So if I hold down Alt and left mouse button, I'm able to rotate. Right mouse button lets me zoom and middle mouse button lets me go up and down like this. So up here we have the shelf tools, which represent various operations within Houdini. The simplest of which are laying down these simple shapes. So I'm going to click on this box, and what you'll notice is that it allows you to put it anywhere in world space. However, if I hold down control and click on the box, it's going to put it right in the middle. This applies to all the other objects here. And the same concept applies to cameras and lights. So if I click on the camera, it allows me to put it anywhere. But if I control click, it actually conforms to my viewport. But now if I navigate away from the camera, it's going to take me out of it. So what we have to do is go to this drop down menu, go back to camera and click on this lock in the right toolbar of the viewport. And now if I rotate around, it's going to stick to my perspective. And same goes for lights. If I click on this point light, it's going to allow me to put it wherever I want. But if I hold down control, it's going to conform to my viewport again. And now that I have the lock on, it sticks to my perspective. So many people refer to Houdini as a 3D operating system because of its hierarchical structure. So right now we're at the top of the hierarchy in the object context, and every pane shows this in its file path over here. So this is similar to what you'd find in Windows or Mac operating systems with the Explorer or Finder. Because if I dive inside one of these objects, the file path is going to change, and now we're in the geometry context. So the difference between the object and the geometry context is that they have a completely different set of tools. So if I press tab, I basically get a menu of nodes that I can put down. But if I do the same thing in the geometry context, the menu is completely different because there's different operators based on what context you're in. Operators are basically nodes that represent certain operations. So right now that we're in the geometry context, all of these nodes that you see here are called SOPs, which stands for surface operators. The simplest of which is a transform SOP. So if I put that down and connect it to my box and highlight this flag, which I'll get into in a second, we're able to manipulate it's translation, rotation, scale. So here I'm manipulating the Y translation and the scale. I'm going to briefly talk about selection modes here. So I'm going to delete this transform node. And now that we're looking at the box, if I press S in here, which is the same as clicking on this arrow for selection mode, the default selection mode is primitives, which is basically polygons or faces. And I could select one or several if I hold down shift. But this menu over here or here lets you switch between different selection modes. So right now we're in primitive mode. And if I press one, it's going to switch us into detail mode which is basically conforming to the object context. And here you can select the various objects. Now, the two hotkey is for point selection mode. So I can select points. Three is for edge selection mode. And four is back to our primitive selections. Now to toggle between the transformation mode and the selection mode, you basically press enter for our interactive translation 
gizmo. And to select, you press S again, and you're back to selection mode. Up in this top right corner of the scene view, we can find our different shading modes. So here we have flat shaded, flat wire shaded, smooth shaded, and here we have wireframe. The hotkey for wireframe is W. So this toolbar on the left of the scene view is basically for selection modes, transformations, and snapping. So here we have detail selection mode. Here we have our geometry selection modes. And if you hold down the uh, left mouse button here, you can actually go between these modes, which I was doing using the hotkeys here. So if I select my object in the node graph and flip through these transformation tools, this is for move, rotate, and scale. But here we have a multi-gizmo, which actually lets us do any of those operations. Here we have different snapping modes, which I'll get into later. On the right toolbar here, we have uh, the toggle for displaying the grid. We have the lock, which I've already went over, and the different lighting modes. So this is for disabling lighting. This is for the headlight coming from the camera. We have normal lighting, high quality lighting, and high quality with shadows, which we can't see because there's nothing to cast shadows on at this point. These six icons are for displaying the various facets of our geometry. For example, the points, vertex normals, Velocity, which we currently don't have. These are point numbers. These are primitive normals and primitive numbers. There are many approaches to working with Houdini in terms of adding objects to our scene. I can actually add objects within the geometry context. So if I put down a sphere, and flag it, I can see the sphere over here. However, I can also put one down on the object context. And we have control over this in the top hierarchy. So this brings me to the topic of flags. So whenever you see a blue flag here, this means visibility. So toggling this is going to display it in the viewport and also render it. And same goes for the geometry context. So whatever I have highlighted is going to be visible. So I'm going to get rid of this sphere for now. And I'm going to flag this sphere and move it over. And because it has the blue flag, we're seeing it but not seeing the box. When I select the box, we get a little wireframe representation of it. This pink flag templates the box. So even though I'm not selecting the box currently, we still see the wireframe so that we have a reference of it. I can put down a merge node and wire both of these into here. And if I flag it, we see both of the objects here. So now if I make a sphere in our object context and move it over and dive back inside here, we see that this sphere is semi-transparent because it's another object. This is because the ghost other objects mode is on in this drop-down menu. If I show all objects, they're all going to be represented the same. And if I hide other objects, it's going to hide the sphere. I'm going to jump back up to our object context. And if I press D while hovering over the scene view, we get our display options. So here we can, for example, change our background to dark or gray. And there's various other uh, options here for displays which I'll get into later. So I want to quickly go over some basic modeling tools. I'm going to delete my sphere 
and delete this merge and sphere over here and untemplate the box. And we're going to do a few basic modeling operations on this box. So if I move it up, it's going to correspond to our parameters over here. And there are different ways to use the modeling functions in Houdini. My favorite is actually doing it in the viewport itself. So if I press S for selection mode and go into primitive selection, uh, whatever I have selected will apply the operation which I'm about to execute. So I'm going to press tab while hovering over the scene view. And here we, we can actually execute different operations here. So I'm going to search for extrude. And here we have poly extrude. And this is actually interactive. I can move this uh, lever to extrude it in and out. And here we have more options for inset and subdivisions. So what I'm actually going to do is extrude all the faces. So I'm going to go back to my selection mode by pressing S and double click to select all the faces. And I'm going to run that command again. So poly extrude. And if I move the lever, they're all going to be extruding outward. Now I want to extrude them individually, so I'm going to change this to individual elements rather than connected components. Now if I move it, it's going to extrude them all individually. So let's move them by a distance of 1. Okay, maybe I'll have the inset a little bit in like this. So the next operation I want to apply is a bevel to all of these edges in my shape. So I could just double click to start adding loops. And if I hold down shift, it's going to add to my selection. However, I can actually select them with my current selection mode of box select. And it's actually going to select all of them for me. So again, if I hover over the scene view and press tab and type in bevel, we're going to run the poly bevel command and tweak this offset. And I'm going to change the shape to round and give it a bit more subdivisions. So I know this might be jumping the gun a little bit, but I'm going to do a very basic dynamic simulation here. And I'm simply going to use the shelf tools that we have provided for us. So if I go into the rigid bodies tool, have the box object selected and select RBD hero object, this is going to automatically apply dynamics to it. Then if I go to our collisions tab and click on ground plane, this is going to be our collider object. Now if I move this box object up <clears throat> and press play on our timeline, it's going to run our dynamic simulation on it. This toggle is for real-time playback. So right now, it's playing back as fast as it possibly can compute the simulation. But if I press this real-time tab, it's going to uh, be going at 24 frames a second. So the navigation hotkeys are the up arrow to play. And if you press the up arrow again, it's going to stop at whatever frame you're at. If you hold down control and press the up arrow, it's going to reset the play bar to frame one. And the down arrow lets you reverse the timeline. So you can go back and forth at will. So I'm going to be explaining more of what's happening under the hood of this dynamic simulation in a later tutorial. One really great resource for learning Houdini is this Houdini Foundation's PDF on the side effects website, which I'll link to in the description below. You can actually download it for free and read this over. 
This goes over all the fundamentals that you need to know to get started in Houdini. Alright, that's it for the tutorial. Thanks for watching.